have sensational news. We're pulling out all the stops. The one no the one no Just gotta move. And have a good old Just time. feel like magic. Keep moving, baby. The sound of that. Remain calm. OMFG. Amazing. Are you jealous? bigger than that. Welcome to the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase 2021. It's exciting that last year was so dark and so hot so we had to stay safe, then stay home, and then, no, go to work, but still stay safe, I know. But 2021 is exciting. Aren't we lucky that we have just the platform? Multi-Choice does that. They discover, they train, and they give you a platform to showcase our very own authentic African stories. Welcome to the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase 2021. We're excited. If you're with us here on our first virtual edition, the hashtag is MCU Showcase 21. That's MCU Showcase 21. 21. Any questions you might have about what's ahead, any questions that's been burning about what kind of stories are we telling as Africans? Hashtag MCU Showcase 21. I'm Flavia Timsime Kabura and welcome to the second edition of the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase. First, a word from our CEO of Multi-Choice Africa, Brand Davini. It's a pleasure to welcome uh, you all here at our latest multi-choice showcase. Uh, it's a long tradition for us to share our upcoming content with you in advance as a recognition for the role that you play as media. It's our commitment to you to actually do this on a regular basis before we share it with the wider community. I'm using the word community uh, because multi-choice is an integral part of each of the communities we operate in. And we're quite intentional about this. Our business are locally owned and managed and we employ locally, we invest direct and indirectly in communities and most importantly we're telling the local stories and local languages across Africa. As a team we're constantly challenging each other to, to ensure that we keep on, on fulfilling our roles within each of the communities like with the recent COVID uh, outbreaks uh, we were thinking about how do we keep on educating our, our, our children by providing educational programming, as well as giving uh, the peer wider community access to, to better information uh, by bringing news channels down uh, of okay offerings. We're putting the word value in front of you uh, all the time, but you know, value means different things for different people. Uh, value is not really only about the price of a product or uh, the exclusivity of our content, so much more. Um, our customers tell us that uh, in the way we interact with them and service them, uh, you know, offers value to them. Whether it's us providing them with payment reminders and a view of the content that they might expect, or providing them with multiple payment platforms uh, to enable them to easily reconnect our services, uh, or to make it easy for them to even do self-service with our My TV apps and uh, My Go TV. Uh, apps, they, they value the interactions and experiences with us and we will continue to find better ways to interact and communicate with our customers. So our customers not only value the quality of our technologies uh, in providing a clear picture quality or strong uh, uh, signal strength, uh, but they also value the choice that our technologies offer. So our Customers can choose between the DSTV satellite technology, they can choose the go to be terrestrial technology, or even our OTT services, whether it be the DSTV app or the Showmax app. 
I'm always uh, personally inspired by the passion and commitment of our local teams. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to hand you over to the various teams to take you through the content outlook for the next six months. That's a word from the CEO of MultiChoice Africa, Brand of Villiers. And now to continue this conversation, but a perspective back here at home in Uganda, I'm joined by the Managing Director of MultiChoice Uganda, Mr. Hassan Saleh. How are you? Um, I'm fine, Flavia. Good to see you. Thank you. Looking smashing. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, you all to this year's uh, media showcase. Um, and this is the second uh, of a kind. We had the first in September last year. And this year's uh, theme is uh, celebrating our voices and uh, sharing our, our stories. Yes. Uh, it must be different to come from what happened uh, the other year into something like this, a virtual edition. Uh, the difference, what does that you know, tell you about the changes that have happened? A lot has happened, uh, Flavia, but also uh, if we look at the silver lining, we have also been enabled differently. Um, uh, this year's showcase is to celebrate our brand history, uh, to share with uh, you know, our, our viewers, uh, and our customers, what's new in stock uh, for multi-choice, what new content is coming uh, into 2021 and beyond. But with new additions or new changes come new audiences, right? Um, when when multi-choice is thinking of creating a platform, it's no longer just what we know. It's now we can tap into the rest of the world, we can tap into new audiences. How has that changed? Mm. Um, we, we've seen um, our customers uh, seeking new content and uh, into 2020, rolling into 2021, we've introduced a lot of new content, new channels like uh, Pal Magic Prime. Uh, we've uh, introduced pop-up channels depending on needs uh, of customers like Zumo uh, for the you know the younger generation, Kicks for the lovers of. Uh, Kung Fu and, 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 and everything. We've even had pop-up you know, channels like uh, the, the James Bond movie uh, pop-up channel. So and all that has been to allow our customers have more variety um, uh, into 2021 and beyond. Yeah, but the excitement here at home is Pearl Magic Prime. We had Pearl Magic, yes, but it seems that either the content was too much or the need grew. Pearl Magic Prime, tell us. Um, uh, Pearl Magic Prime is part of a, a wider strategy. Uh, remember, this year's theme is uh, celebrating our voices, telling our stories. As multi-choice, our strategy for 2021 and beyond is to tell the African story. There is no better way than us introducing a channel uh, that 100% embraces and shares with our customers those stories and that's the specialness about Pal Magic Prime. Um, it's loaded with local content and uh, what Pal Magic Prime has also done for us is to open doors to younger generation. Uh, the industry is now seeing employment of, of, of younger people, script writers, directors, producers, and that's a great thing for, for, for the Ugandan story. Yeah, before yeah. we go into what you've actually done for the young people to train them, um, I, I would think a big advantage is to say that if we have Pearl Magic Prime for Ugandan stories, as you say, celebrating our voices, that competition of, I can't tell my story mixed with uh, someone from Zimbabwe, for example, but Absolutely, it's our yeah. own, right? Absolutely. I think that that's the power of Pearl Magic Prime, that it's the Ugandan story, it's Ugandan content, um, and uh, th that's what we will be able to do because uh, this is just the beginning. Um, I'm excited about Pal Magic Prime. The feedback we're getting from, from you as our customers is enormous, you know, it's great. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about the young people. You mentioned we're giving a chance to young people who now say, I can try it, I can do it, I can be a director, I can be a producer, I can learn. Yes. So, so Flavia, um, what we have done at MultiChoice is twofold. So we've said to be able to tell our African story and for Uganda specifically, our Ugandan story, 
is a to create the medium which is palm magic prime but we then said with this we needed to harness skill to be able to create the pipeline of content coming through so we have started our multi-choice talent factory uh, where we identify young talent train them in a year-long you know program uh, get them uh, trained as skilled as, as script writers as artists as actors and actresses you know as directors um, we've uh, partnered with uganda communications commission uh, through their annual film festival awards um, to celebrate outstanding content that is coming through which then comes on to pal magic and through all these initiatives we are identifying young talent and ensuring that you know we enable them with you know the good work uh, we're training them uh, but even those that we've not been able to enable because the industry now has a medium uh, we are seeing younger people um, uh, get into uh, movie making get into series making and we're seeing between 300 to 1000 you know series now being done annually which is proper ugandan content that's something worth celebrating yes. right absolutely um i'll let you give us a word on what just somebody needs to take home uh, for this uh, showcase 2021 and also maybe speaking into the fact that we're not just telling our stories for ourselves with multiverse as a platform we're taking our stories to the world um thank you flavia i think to 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 our audience um uh, we would like to first of all thank you for uh, patroning us uh, as multi-choice we really look forward to giving you much more uh, on content um, and if you take a look at pal magic and pal magic prime you will see what's in stock uh, for us and the years ahead um, uh, we also look forward to encouraging younger and younger people into the world of uh, content production, into the world of, uh, you know, uh, making movies and, and series and, uh, and documentaries. Um, uh, that's what's exciting. Uh, that's what, uh, you know, I seek the audience to indulge them and um, enjoy uh, DSTV and GoTV uh, brands. Fantastic, talking about all the wonderful things to expect 2021 and going forward here in Multi-Choice Uganda. But a couple of questions, since we're virtual, um, there are a couple of questions coming in. And one is on the fact that, yes, they're hearing you say new exciting programs are coming on all the platforms for Multi-Choice Uganda. But when? When's the next big thing in terms of local content? Before I, I, I tell you when the next big thing is coming, I'll just remind you know, our audience that uh, we've just launched Palm Magic Prime. That's been big for us. Um, uh, we've uh, launched uh, Honey TV and Honey TV is the Africa version of Palm Magic Prime. So Honey TV tells the African story and you'll find content from great African production uh, experts, you know, great content across the continent. So catch that, have a look at that. So what's next? What's coming? In July, we will launch the East African channel. And uh, I like to call it the East African version of Pal Magic Prime, where we will amalgamate great content from Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda uh, on the channel. So please look out for that. That will be uh, something uh, worth reckoning. Okay, I guess yeah. that also gives us a chance to work together uh, within East Africa to create certain Absolutely. stories. Absolutely, and, and uh, yes. yes. And, and that's the whole essence. The whole essence is that uh, uh, for us as Uganda, Kenyans, you know, in Kenya, that we should be able to export, you know, our content. Um, something amazing, Flavia, is that uh, since we got Sanyo onto Pal Magic Prime, uh, we get more reviews and asks from Kenya than even here in Uganda. So it's caught on like a bushfire and everybody wants to know what the next episode is you know it's almost like our east african got 
right? Uh, if yeah. you know what I mean. Right. <laughs> and just yeah. to note also, because that then shows, like we said, we're telling the story is not just to be watched by Ugandans. Absolutely. For the rest of the world. Someone might be hearing and saying, those are too many good things happening. Uh, affordability, adjustment in price. Yeah. Um, uh, again, uh, everything we do is interlinked. Um, we've invested heavily, you know, uh, and we will be investing heavily in great African content. We have invested heavily in uh, uh, building the talent and the skill for creating content. And it left the third box to be solved. And that is enabling the customer be able to actually enjoy our service. And for us, enabling the customer starts with barrier to entry. So we've made it easier for the customer to join DSTV or GoTV. Um, today at 99,000 uh, you get the shillings, you get you know, hooked onto uh, DSTV and enjoy all the great content there is, depending on which bouquet you sign in. Uh, price used to be at 159,000, we brought it down to 99,000. Uh, we have uh, done a 43% price drop from 69,000 to 39,000 for the GoTV subscriber. Um, and that means for you that entry into this service should no longer be a, a big barrier. Um, we're also mindful of the times that we're coming through, right? And, and I think you talked about it, you know, in the opening that it's been a rough year, you know, behind us. So we want, you know, our customer to continue enjoying uh, content without that barrier to entry. Yes, absolutely. Well, well, thank you so much for highlighting that. Good news, right? If you're accustomed to, what, why, why are they doing that? Well, they've told you, they've invested heavily in, in all processes, really. If you are a writer, if you're a director, if you're the audience, and you like quality work, but you also want our own stories, Multi-Choice Uganda has all of that for you. We're still having the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase with our hashtag MCU Showcase 21. Calling all filmmakers. Creating great content requires great collaboration. Introducing the Multi-Choice Talent Factory Portal, a pan-African networking platform that connects directors, producers, scriptwriters, DOPs, sound specialists, editors, actors, and more. Find each other, stay in touch, and create opportunities to keep making great African film. Visit multichoicetalentfactory.com and register today. Jambo. My name is Joki Mohoho. I'm the Multi Choice Talent Factory East Africa Academy Director. It has been an eventful year. This second cohort of students have actually taken more time to complete their program than intended in the curriculum. Indeed, due to COVID, they have taken six extra months to complete the program. But this has worked to our advantage in a big way. On the 17th of March, 2020, when I packed all the students off to the airports to return to their respective countries, many were sad, thinking they will never be able to complete the program and graduate. COVID brought us digital enhancement. Who would have known with the students spread across four countries and in many different regions even within the country would remain so bound together digitally. We continued with our virtual classes and I'm happy to announce all students were able to attend those classes digitally. Not only that, the students kept in touch with each other virtually, digitally. And indeed, I saw a good cross-pollination between the students from one country to another. Some came up with the ideas and the ideas were actually shot in another country. Great cooperation, great teamwork. And this is what I love about our East African students. Thank you to Marty Choice for the brilliant thought of having this Academy, fully sponsored. We couldn't have done this without the support of our stakeholders. These young people are now ready to go out there and be the leaders in filmmaking in Africa. 
Thank you. The Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase. Let's talk about the Multi-Choice Talent Factory. Launched in 2018, they discover and train great talent. We know it's multi-choice, it's content, it is local. So if they can get local talent to be trained in everything and anything until you major in your best skill, then of course, it tunnels down to great content. And one of the people who actually got to graduate in the virtual ceremony, we've been through COVID, you know, the pandemic, you can't actually do it in person, but nonetheless, the skills have been earned. Please on set, welcome Victoria Nachimbawa, Philomena. How are you? I'm looking right. vibrant. Well, <laughs> happy? I am, I am. Yeah. I'm quite happy. How was the virtual graduation? Exciting, at the same time, sad because we were not together as we had hoped to be. So it was a lot of nostalgia. Yeah, but I loved it. It was beautiful. Okay. So I'd, I'd like to pick the intro. Where did it start for you? Why even the choice to even join the Multi-Choice Talent Factory? Were you hoping to abiding, be a budding actress? Were you hoping to be a great director, a script writer? Where's your interest? Well, uh, my background is in art and I've always loved film, animation. So when I heard about it the first year, by the time I heard about the calls, the auditions had ended. So I promised myself to try again the next year. I figured I would give it a shot at least. Okay, you, you told me I didn't have a background in film, uh, but yet they chose me. Why do you think they made the decision to pick you? I must have been very persistent <laughs> in my um, application yeah. because I feel I projected my passion for film and art quite well. Yeah. I feel that's what got me in. And um, they are quite selective, I must say. They loved, they tend to pick characters that are all around in terms of um, social and economical skill sets as well as confidence yeah. so my background in art must have been a huge point for me because i expressly told them that i would love to get into production design much as i'd been doing other s forms of it in terms of um, wedding decor and events decor i think they saw potential in me from such raw experience to your first second first week at the MTF Academy. What are the expectations before? And then were they shattered? <laughs> were they um, shattered in a good way when you got in? I cannot express exactly my feeling going in. First of all, just from getting accepted, I could not believe it at first. And they superseded their, uh, my expectations. They, went, they were beyond fulfilled. I felt they did quite a good job and um, later on COVID was a huge blow to us because we had gotten to our peak in our experience. So what had you done up until COVID, the lockdown, that entire phase? The program director and, um, and the program coordinator did a very good job um, putting together a proper well-rounded program for us and I felt like we got an all-round experience they emphasized being able to relate. So the one thing that they did for us from the start was team building. And they got us to a point whereby we, the first month was about getting to know each other, getting to know your team, and how you can go well together. Our differences making the magic. So that was... I've been on a one. set before and I can understand for me, why multi-choice would want a one-on-one -on -one look for everybody. Um, because sometimes you think that's not an important role or that's not an important person on set. What surprised you in learning about these different aspects and the process? What surprised you in saying, oh, I did not even know that this was so important in the process? I was surprised by the fact that they wanted us to shadow every other role. role. Mm -hmm. and. In that way, they took away the individualistic perspective such that you could put yourself in the feet of others and be able to aid them. Like you ask, how best do I help that department such that my department also shines? 
um, we got to experience great sets, studio sets and actual film sets. For example, we worked on uh, the Selena set and we were able to intern with a few others as well. And the studio sets that we were able to work with were Super Sport, Super Sport Studio. We were tasked by uh, one of our facilitators, Bob Heaney, to recreate a set that he had scripted years before from Isindingo. And we were able to construct an actual set from scratch. And I had the privilege of set dressing and designing it as well. He told us a lot about the visual architecture of film. And um, yes, the Super Sport Studios were quite something because they are epic, they're out of this world. They have everything that you could think of. And one of the other highlights was um, we got to film the Kenya versus Togo match at um, one of the biggest um, stadiums in, in Kenya. And that was amazing for me because I never figured I'm not a huge football fan, but it was a good experience and it turned me into a fan. And even after COVID, much as yes, it hit us real hard. When we got home, we were still able to carry on our works virtually. We got to shoot individual films. We had assignments set for us and we had a lot of Zoom interactions with our facilitators. We actually, did a course with New York Film Academy and we made our own mini documentaries and public service addresses and we got to work with UN on the UN Verified project where we were tasked to, to work under the theme and pause and um, create awareness about sharing the wrong information to do with COVID someone is watching and they said, wow, so that's what Multi-Choice Talent Factory does, creates such wonderful experiences. And maybe they're skeptical about someday being part of the academy. What would you say to sort of nudge them? And by the way, you had no experience, so they're watching and thinking, I could never. <laughs> what would you say? Do not be discouraged, do not be put out. They do have high standards, so you have to bring it. Like I said, I laid it on thick in my application so you should as well and be yourself that's the one thing that i realized that they loved when i got into the house when we came together as the 20 of us i realized they brought together some of the most original characters they are and i love that experience so they must really love um, or emphasize that that you should be yourself in all angles. Do not try to mirror the Western world. Yes, they have brought a lot to uh, um, to us technically, but we have our own sense of style and speech, dialogue, and storytelling that we should never let go. We should never drop it. I want to encourage everyone else to please apply and. Feel free to explore your different identities and learn to monetize them. That was the beauty with MTF. It was not just taking our skills and training them to or honing them, honing our talents, but they were helping us also learn how to use those skills, monetize them and be able to apply them in our own individual industries because we were able to study when you come together, you all share your experiences and you borrow from one and drop another, be able to brew the right stew of creativity. Mm -hmm. That is Nachimboa, Philomena Victoria, and MTF alumni, and, and you've heard it. Be original, we must tell our own stories. So we have to find our own identity. And of course, Multi-Choice Uganda has given us Pearl Magic Prime. We are telling our stories in the most premium quality way. It's a what now? It's a lamp! 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 It's a lam
Oh, the opposite way for seeing a scent. They tell themselves that we just don't have it. That gift to amaze. That power to stand out. But they could never be more wrong. Going up. Let us introduce you to Uganda. Tell us of our stories, creators of our glory, shooting for the moon, giving life a better view. We are not scared, no. We are prepared to be every next big head. Lava fire, lava swag, lava bakabi in shining colors. We are loud and proud. Turn up the sound, minds racing with ideas, hearts beating in full gear. This is the premiere of a new atmosphere. Turn up the lights, camera, action, lava level. Let us introduce you to Pal Magic Prime. Stay connected today to enjoy premium Ugandan entertainment. Pal Magic Prime, like never before. It's your moment with DSTV Uganda. Welcome to the 2021 Multi Choice Showcase. While 2020 posed various challenges for content producers across the world, it has also been a year where creativity has come to life. And I'm proud of the resilience of our industry and the strides the film industry continues to make across the continent. While we had success in 2020, we are excited and eager to show you what we've got in store for 2021. We've invested in and remain committed to what we call our hyper-local strategy, which at its core outlines how we will continue to bring local productions not only to viewers across Africa, but to the world, whilst giving African storytellers a platform through which to tell their stories as only they can. Right now, we are leading the way across the continent when it comes to creating and supporting local content. This is evident in the recent addition of hundreds of local content hours through the launch of Pearl Magic Prime in Uganda, Aquaba Magic in Ghana, and Abul TV in Ethiopia, as well as with the launch of Honey, our first Pan-African lifestyle channel. As Brunt mentioned earlier, our business exists because of you, our stakeholders, and of course, our customers. It is because of our customers that we could continue to focus our energy on growing the local industry and bringing content which is authentically yours, relevant, local, and above all, entertaining and informative. And we have seen time and time again that our viewers love content and stories that resonate with who they are. Our investment in African stories also mean that we're investing in local businesses and in technical skills development. 47% of our local procurement spend benefits small, medium and micro enterprises. This means we are developing local storytelling talent and increasing the number of independent production houses across Africa, while independently contributing to employment and directly contributing to economic growth. This is the true power of storytelling. By developing these stories, we not only entertain, we also make a meaningful contribution to the growth of a country. We pride ourselves for our knowledge of our customers and of understanding what they want to watch. We do this by continuously studying their behavior and viewing patterns, which allows us to deliver products which match those needs, while simultaneously supporting the aspirations and mandates of local film bodies. The result is an ever-expanding local content offering and investment into countries, into industries, and in people. We have worked hard to establish ourselves as one of Africa's most trusted sources of quality, homegrown programming, both through our committed focus on producing quality content, as well as leveraging the pan-African reach of our platforms to showcase the very best of African storytelling. 
we are seeing more and more that our content has the ability to cross borders, finding resonance across countries, across the continent, and even on a global stage. Aletta and our content teams will tell you more about the exciting lineup we have on offer and how we've successfully exported popular formats like Idols, Big Brother, and Date My Family. We also know that people want to watch on the go, which is why we are making sure that our programming is available to watch when you want to watch it, where you want to watch it on many devices. But our focus on local content doesn't mean we've neglected the best international offering. We still see a huge demand for international content across specific genres and will continue to bring the best international content with our Express from the US offering, fantastic British programming, as well as some of the best movies giving our viewers a front row seat to see the latest blockbusters. It's absolutely wonderful to be part of this incredible team who work tirelessly to bring the best stories from Africa and the world to homes and screens across the continent. And I hope that you will also enjoy today's session as we showcase our passion for telling stories like only we can. Hello, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to join us as we look at some of the highlights for the months ahead. Being Africa's most loved storyteller is a great privilege. And to us, it's not just amplifying amazing stories across the continent, but also creating, writing, and producing authentic and original programming. This also means giving our homegrown shows a stage to shine, creating entire channels, not just shows, that support and develop storytellers across Africa. So far this year, we've added three local channels to the Emirate family. These are Apol TV in Ethiopia, Aquaba Magic in Ghana, and Pearl Magic Prime in Uganda. We also have our much-loved favorites. Considering the challenges of last year, it's amazing how Emirate staples like The River, The Queen, Tinsel, and Selena continue to bring the magic home year after year. When it comes to keeping it real, our original local reality shows like our Perfect Wedding and Dead My Family, as well as our adapted international reality formats like The Bachelorette, Survivor, and Idols have been very successful. We are bringing viewers more in the months ahead. On Mnet and One Magic, our local productions live alongside the world's best entertainment, which is exactly where they deserve to be. We'll be working with talents from across the continent, both on camera and behind the scenes, to make sure that wherever you are, you can come home to the magic in the months to come. You're still watching the Multi Choice Uganda Showcase for 2021. Now, there's a place that was founded as a center of wild animals, which were often injured, uh, found, and this was the Entebbe Zoo, which we now know that has a kids' park, a zoo definitely for animals, a botanical forest, a beach accommodation, and so much more. To give us a look at that experience, let's have the head of marketing, Colin Asimu. The sound that you hear in the background, that's the sound of the electric fence that allows me to sit this close to these animals without getting mauled or torn apart. Speaking about mauling and dominating, oh, Flavia, we're having too much fun. You see, the speaker is about to come off. The fire is here. Wherever you are, people, we've had such an amazing year at the Multi-Choice uh, Showcase. And I'm here to tell you all about it. We've got four exciting shows on Pearl Magic Prime. We open up with Sanyu, Uganda's very fast, long form, high quality, premium entertainment telenovela. And that's followed by Prestige, another riveting story that comes to us, locally produced 100% Ugandan stories, 100% premium. We then added some soup to that with Mama and Me, which is an exciting dramedy, all coming live and direct on channel 148 on uh, DSTV, available to Compact, Compact Plus, and DSTV Premium. But let me tell you, nothing is as exciting as our two new reality shows, Dead My Family Uganda, which is a story about young people trying to date in today's modern family, in today's modern world, in a post 
pandemic or panoramic or pandemonium situation, wherever you are, Dead My Family is the show for you. But I also want to bring you into a very riveting story where we ended up working and telling the story behind some of Uganda's biggest socialites, movers and shakers, in a Sunday night special called Story Yangi, where over an eight episode season, we tell stories never before heard and things as we pull back the curtain on some of these socialites' lives and exciting times. But we don't just stop there. And because of that, we just, in the last couple of weeks, wrapped out a round of call for productions where we were looking for movies that are going to sit on our new East African movie channel. That is real commitment to the business. And no wonder that at the just concluded Uganda Film Festival 2021 Gala Awards, we walked out with Best Actress in a TV Drama, Nana Kaga. Very, very proud from Prestige. And Best Actor in a TV Drama, Raymond Rushabiro for What If? And of course, the best TV drama on TV. And when you put that together, it speaks to, the process speaks into a drive for excellence and unmatched quality. And just like the lion, we continue to be the king of entertainment. At DSTV, we continue and have continued to focus on great entertainment. We introduced some interesting series channels, TL novellas. We introduced Timeless Disney Channel. We introduced the Eva Plus pop-up. And of course, what that did is rounded off our exciting offering of series entertainment. We brought that home together with some exciting content from uh, watching the Kardashian uh, 40 year, 40th birthday special, which by the way is absolutely stunning. An unmatched movie content slate which was breathtaking and this wouldn't be special if it wasn't the interview that broke the internet. Oprah, Harry, Meghan, exclusive to DSTV customers. That story sort of brought us all the way home and that great international content plate leads us into other content that we have on the continent. Uh, stuff like The Undoing, stuff like Legacy, shows that are gripping high production values, The Bachelorette SA, Live Island, South Africa, and it would not all come together if it did not talk about this gripping new show called Lioness. And we wanted to close off this section by speaking about our new channel called Wild Earth. Channel 183, available to our customers on Compact, Compact Plus, and DSTV Premium that has no narrations, is a 24-hour live channel of safaris and live action as it happens is how you see the action. It tells you that if it comes and when it's about taking over the landscape, we are unmatched, our viewers have unmatched experiences. Allow me to close it here and send it over back to Flavia in studio. Choice is continuing the expansion and investment into local content. And here in Uganda, we had Pearl Magic, but with all the influx of all the content and great work that's coming out of our country, we have Pearl Magic Prime. Uh, we have on set today someone who's not only given us the content, but also has been part of the content, an actor, a producer, and director, no stranger to multi-choice, Matthew Nawiso. How are you? I'm good, Flavia. How are you doing? Good. Mm. So, if you were to just look at how far our film industry has come, where we're heading, what excites you right now? I think it's very exciting having been part of the beginning, the beginning journey, because I joined film as an actor in 2006. Yeah, yeah, we were doing a, a film called Battle of the Souls and things were pretty hard. Uh, it was really a hassle uh, making film. But today, a lot of stuff has changed and so many things are so much easier today than it was about. You were an actor and you're years. saying it was a hustle. So I'm imagining, were the tools not available? Was it the training for the actors? What 
what was not available then? Actually, to start with was the training. Right. Um, as an actor, I would say I was pretty much self-taught. As a filmmaker, I was pretty, uh, I'm self-taught. I think the best I got as an actor in my first project was a film workshop. We had a workshop with uh, the person that we were doing the first, my first film project with. And uh, he happened to have traveled, uh, gone to film school in Amsterdam and had links with uh, uh, a film lecturer from Amsterdam. Yeah, and he, on one occasion, he actually brought him down and we had a, a two day workshop. So that's the best I could get. I, I think even up to this day, we still have a limitation when it comes to school, film school for acting. It is still a huge challenge. But then again, when it comes to the side of crew, uh, production, I think there is much more than it was back then, yeah. Okay, uh, we have a thing in Uganda where we say, oh, you slept on the talent, <laughs> you know? No. Uh, but but you were one who, mm. a lot of people thought, oh, mm. we really slept on this talent until mm -hmm. Africa mm. Magic Viewers' Choice Awards. Yeah. And then all yeah. of a sudden, he's our own. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, so the journey to that yeah. um, platform mm. and to where you are now, mm. would you say the recognition has been an advantage or has done nothing for you? No, I will say the recognition has been an advantage. Uh, Okay, just feel sad that to this day, I think that was 2014 when I won the Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. Up to this day, I'm still the only one, which feel, makes me feel a bit sad. I'm like, okay, are we not doing enough as an industry? Or maybe I'm, look, I'm, I'm still positive. I'm still positive. I think things are going to change. And today, if you look at this year, for instance, what is happening in the industry, I think I see a very bright future ahead of us when it comes to actors. Yeah. You said there's no training or film school, let's call it that, to film the, uh, to train the actors, actors yeah. and the talent, or even the crew, to mm, be honest, to mm, know what they're doing. Mm. But platforms like the Multi Choice Talent Factory are there now because maybe they're seeing that gap. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to tell homegrown stories, we mm. need to also understand that this is an industry that is here and can grow. Mm -hmm. um, you were an actor before you went behind the scenes. Yeah. Would you say that something has changed in how we embraced the industry of entertainment and film? How mm. our very own Ugandans mm. embrace the talent that is actors, actress? I think a lot has changed and uh, the audience is embracing this much more. I think maybe just to backtrack, um, to backtrack, Previously, we've had, we have some film schools, uh, universities that are teaching film and they are focusing purely on production. So by multi-choice coming in and putting up the multi-choice talent factory, I think that has given an opportunity to very many people who could not afford fees for film school. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, there are also master classes. I personally attended two master classes. I think first I attended a master class for producers. And the, I had been doing this before. I had been doing this before. I'd, yeah, self-taught. I had uh, done great films that multi-choice has bought, like Grain, Bed of Thorns, Strictly Roses, uh, the series Hashtag Family. I had done this and I was feeling good, but then I would never gotten formal training. So by getting an opportunity to have a masterclass with, uh, in the MTF, it taught me a lot more as a producer. Today, I'm using those skills in some of the productions that I'm doing today, like Sunny. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and we're coming to that content creation, um, Nawiso Films, right? Yeah. For you to then say, I, I will not just be in front of a camera. I'm going to create, I'm going to tell these stories. Um, one, you're probably going to share with us how that dream even comes about, why you choose to go behind the scenes, but also in telling stories, our very own authentic stories. What does that entail? <laughs> Okay, if I start with the first, um, yes, I, when I got into film as an actor, it was beautiful. I think that's about uh, about 10 years back when we did the Hostel show, uh, which aired a lot on uh, DSTV. And uh, I knew that at some point, this series is going to end. Yes. Then what? <laughs> so I had to start thinking ahead and I'm like, okay, so what happens when the series ends? I started talking to friends. How about we start a production house for continuity? But I think most of the people I was talking to weren't as visionary as I was. They weren't seeing things that I, like the way I was seeing it. Then I was looking at my wife, uh, who I acted with in the same series, and I was like, okay, 
Now the series actually came to an end and I was like, uh, we need to do something. You know the fans on social media are like, guys, so what's, no, next? what's next, what's next? So I'm like, okay, we're not going to go looking for the next gig. How about we create the gigs? We'll create ourselves gigs and we create gigs for other people. So that's why we started up the Nawiso Film Production House. And then we produced the various movies, Rain, Bed of Thorns, Prickly Roses and others. So that way, actually when we did the Siri hashtag family, I was the dad and she was the mommy. So we got kids and we're like, ah, here we are. <laughs> we are back on screen, guys. Yeah. If yeah. So that is how we came about to do that. And we also realized that there were not so many film producers around producing good content. So we thought instead of whining about the problem, how about we become the solution? So that's how we started uh, Nawiso Film as a production house. Um, and, and then of course, before we get to the next, that storytelling of our own authentic stories, because you wanted to create versus be created for and you take. Um, what is it? Because I, I, that's, is it the language? Is it how we dress? We can always tell when you look at other film industries that, oh, that's identity for them. That's who this is. But if, if we're seeing our own content, what, what, what is our unique I think factor? as a culture, as Ugandan, we also have our unique culture, language to start with. Uh, many times I would travel to Kenya and people would go like, ah, you are the guy in the hostel show. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so what did you like? It's like, man, you guys, your accent. I'm like, oh, so we have an accent as Ugandans. <laughs> so that I think is the first way, first way someone can tell this is a Ugandan story, our accent. I think when you also look at certain movies that have been, Hollywood films that have been done in, in Uganda, um, take for instance, um, um, Queen of Katwe. Queen of Katwe, when Lupita was acting in there, she did some research. And she, you could tell there are certain words that are Ugandan. We don't say clothes. We say clothes. Yeah. So when you hear clothes, you know this is a Ugandan. So even if it's English, you will tell that this is Ugandan. Yeah. I'll never forget Forrest Whitaker was asked a very important question. Mm. Uh, that whole thing of tell me you're Ugandan without telling me you're Ugandan. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, Ugandans, for you to know that they're in a conversation with you and that's a Ugandan, they said, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. And <laughs> I've never identified so much with something because I said that's true. That's yes, who we are. Is. But yeah. to somebody else, it might mm. be why mm. would you do that? But yeah. to the world, mm. we're funny, we're good, yes, we're yes, cool. Yes, yes, so yes, it's yeah. good to see that. But mm. so you're creating um, content, and Malchus has given you a platform. Like mm. you said before, mm. even what you're creating for Pearl Magic mm. uh, Prime, you were creating movies yeah. for the Malchus platform. Mm. Um, in terms of standards, because mm -hmm. I'd assume they won't take anything and everything just mm -hmm. because they're supporting mm -hmm. and expanding. Mm -hmm. They will take only the best. Yep. You're self-taught in everything. Mm -hmm. How do you then yeah. get to see that, okay, for me to change the industry, I might, mm. I must meet these standards. Who mm. then tells you the standards? Who shows you the way, if I can mm. ask that? I think personally, I've, I've been inspired a lot by looking at Hollywood creations. And I'm thinking I, that's what I need to do. And that's why I think I'm not very comfortable with the whole China Uganda because it puts us at a certain level, but we need to aim higher. So over the years, I've been studying and looking at how people make films like Hollywood filmmakers. What kind of shots they use? What kind of lighting are they looking at? What kind of art goes into a production? Uh, when I attended uh, my second masterclass with MTF, we had, uh, it was about sound. Uh, field sound recording and post-production sound. I learned a lot as a producer what goes into sound. And I got to appreciate what it takes to have a film, a good film. Sound is a big element and that is something that people never really think. People think it's about having a, a high-end camera. Yeah, people think it's just about a high-end camera, but there's a lot that goes into lighting, there's a lot that goes into sound. So having some of this knowledge, when uh, Multi-Choice commissioned us to do Sanyu series, I knew that this is what I've been waiting for to do. Yes, previously I've done great, a great job, but still I had some limitations of budget here and there. Now, because Multi-Choice came on board and they came to support 200%, it was easy 
now to implement each and everything that I needed to be able to put up a good product. And now that today watching Sanyu series, people are like, damn, is this Ugandan? And I'm like, yeah. Which is always the magical we've question. We've been here all along. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, but also when you, when, I've watched Sanyu and for mm. me it is the, it might not necessarily be what you're saying, the Chinayu mm -hmm. labels. Mm -hmm. It's quality, but you can still identify Uganda yes. in it. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to us about, I mean, I love that Mastros is investing here in Uganda because scenery alone, sets alone, mm -hmm. we, we have a lot to yeah. offer. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody can't just say we have to shoot in the same place, the same scenery, mm -hmm. the same environment. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to explore, if I yeah. can say that. Mm -hmm. Have you um, experienced that? And, and as you're growing as a director and producer, mm -hmm. is there support? Because you're, you're making films and story, stories for our country. Mm -hmm. um, but what, how is the, the support for the film industry in the country? I think uh, the support, depending on where, I think support from multi-choice is there, 100%. Uh, support from our uh, government, I think it's, it's lacking a little. Because if we are telling Ugandan stories, I would like to have the freedom to show off Uganda. But, okay, now when we started doing Sanyu series, of, unfortunately it happened during lockdown, so there is little we could do. Even there are certain scenes that we needed to have huge crowds of people, but we can't because of, yeah, we are limited with the SOPs and things like that. We can't travel to a park to show off something, to show off animals. Okay, first, because of what is happening. Secondly, maybe because the people that are responsible don't understand film. So they think we should pay money to go and show off the country. Then they are going to hire somebody else from abroad to come and film that. Film is a, a platform that I think our country should be using to, to, to show off the country. I mean, every filmmaker should have access to all these places because the more we show it, the more we are publicizing without them spending extra. The more you're going to have more tourists coming into the country. So I feel like on the side of government, it's lacking. On the side of multi-choice, they've yeah. done 200%, yeah. One thing I like about Nawiso Films is the array of talent. Uh, a lot of times when something happens in Uganda, we, we pick from the same faces, we use the same names. And what I've seen that is wonderful about you is that you, you show us new faces. You introduce to us people, we said, oh, that's, who is this? Now we start to ask, who is this? What's, are you trying to tell us that there's a whole pool of talent we haven't tapped into in the country? Um, as a, a, our vision as uh, Nabiso Films is to change lives of people in our communities through film. So um, using the same faces is me, okay, maybe giving an extra back to this face, but how about the fresh talent? We get lots of DMs, people saying, I want to join you guys, I want to join you guys, and that's why we're always putting up a call for auditions so that people can come. And we also exhibit new faces. I think this is something that I first saw being tried and worked when we did the Hostel series. Most of the, the core actors were new faces. And this was like a fresh breath to the country. So we like to do this to give opportunities to new people and also give a fresh breath to our audience. Is it true that you are in the hundreds of episodes for Sanyu? Yeah, Sanyu, we've uh, completed filming season one, which was a hundred episodes. And now we are filming season two, which is going to be another 260 episodes. Mm -hmm. What does a, a platform like Paul Magic Prime, especially now when you look at it, you have got a, a, a first time product on, on the platform and people are coming to the platform to enjoy quality and you are literally the first person into the doorway for quality. What's the reception like and what has that done for you going forward? Has it changed your perspective, your vision? I think personally it has done me proud a lot because we've been having a saying a lot among the corporate Ugandans, I don't watch TV, I don't watch, like it's so cool to say I don't watch TV. <laughs> I don't support. I don't watch TV, so, <laughs> yes. yo, I, but then I was like, okay, as I, you know, when I hear such, I think back, okay, yes. why, why aren't people watching TV? Maybe we, the producers, haven't given them a reason to watch TV. So when this opportunity came, March has put up a channel to show purely entertainment. I was like, 
Bravo. Because we've been having issues with other stations in the past and people are saying, uh, we don't have time for this slot. We don't have, it's a lot of air time. And then MultiChoice comes in. And first of all, actually, I would commend MultiChoice because one, it gave producers hope, filmmakers hope. Because before filmmakers would make films and they don't even know where they're going to exhibit them. Yeah. Maybe you could do a film festival, one or two or three or four, five, but who knows how many people went to the festival. But a TV platform is a good exhibition platform. And it's not just free exhibition, it actually pays. So even when you go into production, you know that you can make your projections. If I sell it to so-and-so, if I license it to so-and-so, I'm getting this back back. So first, I think that was a great thing for filmmakers. Two, it is giving an opportunity to actors a lot more exposure, because if once your show is good, it may not just stop at Pearl Magic Prime, but could go on other shows. I think I just saw recently Death to My Family on Honey. Yeah, I'm like, okay, this is good. This is, this is good. So now, why do I say I'm so proud is that now, after we have produced uh, a commission project by Malchoy Sanyu, people are saying, we are glued to TV. People are back to watching TV. They have a reason to watch TV because our own, our own content, yes. Now people are running. Uh, somebody just shared with me a message where they were chatting with somebody. I'm here on a border border to Nansana. I need to catch Sanyu. Yeah, it's like me, story of my life. So to hear that people are running home to watch TV again to me is success. I'm like, we've done a great job. Let's just keep continuing doing this. And as long as Malt Choice is continuing to do this, commissioning more projects, I think we'll be able to produce a lot more good content. People will be back to watching TV. Advertisers will go back to TV because we had lost that. Yeah. Yeah. The critics were saying that, uh, really, Pearl Magic, Pearl Magic Prime, do we have that much content? You know, the, the naysayers, the corporates <laughs> yeah. you're talking about were saying, uh, are you sure, Multi Choice? Will you get as much content as possible? Now, you as a director and producer, what are you? Saying? I think even before Pal Magic Prime, we had Pal Magic, and I, there was a time I was trying to sell them more content. I think the time I just put out Prickly Roses, and uh, they told me we have enough content for a year. We are next purchasing yes. next year in April. What does that mean? The content is there. Yeah. And by the time Marcus decides to put up a second channel, it means there's content. There's plenty and they're trying to make another one that is going to have much better. And already right now people are good. Actually, even the way you, you look at the way it's programmed, you have Sanyu, then Prestige, then maybe Wati for Mama and Mio. Somebody can actually stay glued on TV for a couple of hours without flipping to a sports channel or what or what or what. Yeah. This is Ugandan content. Before we wrap, I mean, when things change, the viewer or audience changes as well. They might change in their mindset, they might change in who you're targeting. Has your audience changed? Have you talked about appreciation, for example, they now say, oh, I can watch local content. Great, I can actually stay glued on the TV. Uh, but also their needs will change as a creator of content. Are, are you seeing a different type of Uganda that you're creating for? Um, in terms of telling our stories, um, I think they are, they are universal stories you can tell that will live for thousands of years. A love story. We will always tell love stories. Someone forever. will always demand to, Someone to, will to, want to, to see, see that. a love yeah. story. Yeah, so there are certain themes that we actually can't run out of. Mm. Yeah, so I, I think we are still in the right direction. Still in the right direction. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So, as we wrap, what would you want to say to somebody who um, is a creator of content or just has a story in their head? Mm. They're creating in their head because up until now they had no clue mm. that such opportunities existed mm. or people like mm. them, a Ugandan, mm. were thriving mm. in creating content. Mm. What I would tell our, a content creator today, young content creator today, is one, you need to know what you want, you need to have great passion for it. You need to give it 200%. I think the biggest challenge with uh, some of our people is that uh, they like doing med mediocre stuff. Don't do mediocre stuff. You will fail. Give it 200% and the sky is the limit for you. 
That is Matthew Nabuiso, a producer, a director, and also actor. And he's part of Nabuiso Films, who actually bring you Sanyu on Pearl Magic Prime. And he says there's plenty of content. Fist your eyes on Pearl Magic Prime and so much more. It's the Multi Choice Uganda Showcase. I need more. Much more. And the award goes to... Pearl Magic Prime. Where else can you find proudly homegrown entertainment? Right, right now, now, we, we are, are taking, taking over. over. And nothing can stand in our way. We're on, on top, top of, of the, the world. world. It is not an easy job. Talk about real power. Why would I sit up for less? I know that everything, everything is moving, moving up to speed. speed. You are now famous. So if, if you, you want, want to see more, more content, content like this, now is the time to experience great storytelling. So instead of missing out, you just sit back, relax, and enjoy a selection of the finest shows tailored with you in mind. I'm glad you could join us. And you're very welcome. To world-class entertainment like never before. Definitely come to the right place, dear. Mwah! On Pearl Magic Prime, DSTV, Channel 148. Hello, I'm so grateful to be back to tell you about the amazing international lineup we have planned for you this year. The past year came with many challenges. And in a time of physical distance, where the world felt a little bit smaller for everyone, it was a privilege to make things a little brighter by bringing the world's best content home. In some way, it has reignited our passion, not only as a broadcaster that connects people and stories, but as a curator of an unsurpassed viewing experience. No matter where you are or what you're into, as Africa's most loved storyteller, we're lighting up the screens with serious star power and entertainment that shines above the rest. Ready? Let's get into it. We're always serious about series, and with so many returning favorites, you can't go wrong. There's the equalizer with Queen Latifa, the rookie, Station 19 and Grey's Anatomy. There's a crossover in FBI and FBI's Most Wanted. And then there's the exciting medical night with The Good Doctor and New Amsterdam. We're also bringing the funny in a big way. There's new seasons of Black Lady Sketch Show, Black Tax, Gronish, Bob Hart's Abishola, and loads of stand-up special with the biggest local and international names in comedy. In April, Z World brings us Zotwa and Akbar, an epic period piece based on India's greatest love story. In June, The Good Son tells the tale of a man facing enemies from his own family in true Bollywood style. And TL Novellas dishes up love and betrayal with Along Came Love in May and When I Fall in Love in June. Our Korean drama channel TVN will deliver all the feels with shows featuring our beloved K-pop stars and K-drama sweethearts with shows such as 100 Days My Prince and Melting Me Softly, both starting in April. But our famous faces aren't strictly for fiction. We have celebrity galore. Even with the Kardashians wrapping up this final scandalous season, we have celeb queens waiting in the wings with total bellas, confessions on Anele and Graham Norton's couches, and coverage of every single red carpet and A-list event, such as the BET Awards in June. More Real Housewives from Dallas to Jersey, Pastors' Wives, Married to Medicine, and the first Black Bachelor. The table is set in the closet packed in our lifestyle and reality slate, with Botched and Our Daughter. We have great documentaries as always, and Top Gear is ready to do another lap. On Nat Geo, COVID delayed, but finally here, the third installment in the genius anthology, Aretha. Then there's the bestest Estes, Awesome stuff, kids. Miraculous New York, Raven's Home, Side Hustle, Paw Patrol, Ben 10, and Teen Titans Go. And you know what? I could tell you, but I think it's so much more fun to show you. That sounds like exactly what we need. What are the odds? Don't worry, cuz, I'm on it. Great idea, Chase. We have movies galore. Whether you're looking for something with a bit of a kick. I want to kill. Big titles for little ones like Trolls World Tour. <laughs> We're the biggest hitters in Hollywood. Bit dramatic. And this year, we're doing pop-up channels like never before, with more of them, but also more accessibility. Compact Plus, Compact, and even DSTV family subscribers. It's been an absolute pleasure spending time with you virtually. And as I always say, if we do things well, 
please tell us about it and write about it. But if we don't, you should also tell us about it to give you and all our subscribers the best viewing experience we can offer. for a murderer. I feel like I'm losing my mind. No one can be trusted. And it's amazing what a man can do with the will to survive. We get to catch a killer. You are a woman with a very public reputation for hunting monsters. The worst thing that ever happened to me was the day they brought you home. It's a psycho roller coaster. I just feel like magic. Life is gonna line up just perfectly. Honey, I'm home. 2021, what do you wish for? Do you wish to make your mark in the fast lane? Where it's all about podium finishes. Done it, Dustin! To be strong and to be healthy. Durant, the war against the whole hot. To experience new challenges. And the cup erupts! To make every second count. And we get up! Yes, you can do it. Yes, you are great. Unbeatable form of this heat. And right history. With every step. It's your wish to make the world sit up and listen. can make your wishes come true. So don't miss any moment of the very best sporting action 2021 has to offer. Experience it all on Supersport, only on DSTV. Hello everyone and welcome. We're really looking forward to sharing our Supersport story with you today. It's a wonderful story and, and it's something that we're very proud of in, in being able to boast the most live sport of any broadcaster around the world. It's been a roller coaster 12 months given the disruptions caused by the pandemic. But one thing that we have been reminded through over this period is that sport makes the world a better place. If anything, sport now, more than ever, has been able to get us through a very difficult period. Despite all of the challenges, our team have worked tirelessly to continue to provide our customers with the best sporting content, both locally and from around the world. Some big wins over the past 12 months have been the Relive campaign, which allowed our customers to relive the greatest sporting moments of all time. Also the redesign and launch of our new thematic channel offering. This has been extremely well received and has increased the average time spent viewing by up to 24%, as we've made it easier for customers to be able to find what it is that they want to watch. Also the launch of the new Supersport app and the redesign of our digital channels. And of utmost importance and at the heart of the Supersport business is the great content that we've got on offer. Over the past 12 months, we've been able to renew some of the most important football rights from around the globe, namely the, the English Premier League, the UEFA Champions League, and then most recently, and something we're very excited about, is our acquisition of the FIFA World Cup rights for next year's World Cup in Qatar. Looking ahead, we've got some fantastic football finals coming up over the next few months. Supersport enters the business end of the football season with three cup finals between April and May. First up on the 25th of April, we've got Pep versus Jose when City take on Spurs for the Carabao Cup. Next up, it's the FA Cup final exactly a month later on the 25th of May. And to culminate the domestic European season, all eyes turn to Istanbul, scene of the most famous UEFA Champions League final comeback of all time when Liverpool bounced back from 3-0 down at half-time to beat AC Milan on penalties. This season's showpiece final is on the 29th of May. Plus, we're adding last year's postponed sporting events to an already bumper sporting calendar, those two events being last year's Euro and the Olympics, which will take place in June and July, respectively. For this year's Euro, Supersport will bring you all 51 games between the 11th of June and the 11th of July on a dedicated channel. For the Olympics, Supersport's coverage will reach new heights with eight dedicated channels and every medal event live on your World of Champions. The Olympics run from the 23rd of July to the 8th of August, so prepare for some unprecedented coverage. The Formula One season revved into action on the 12th of March in Bahrain and culminates on the 12th of December in Abu Dhabi. Supersport will bring you every one of the 23 races in HD 
with in-depth pre- and post-race analysis courtesy of our F1 partners at Sky Sports. And a continuous smash hit with viewers is our coverage of WWE and UFC. Along with your weekly dose of Raw, SmackDown Live and NXT, Supersport will deliver all 14 pay-per-view events along with classic fights and riveting documentaries on its dedicated WWE channel. UFC is one of our fastest growing audience pleasers and it's no secret that it's mainly because of our top African fighters who continue to fly the flag for the continent. Supersport's coverage on the Action Channel includes all 28 fight nights in each of the 13 pay-per-view events that make UFC the pinnacle of MMA. Other exciting content will include the world's major marathons, London, Boston, Tokyo and New York. With so much amazing sporting action coming up over the next few months, make sure you download the Supersport app to enhance your viewing experience. We're incredibly excited about the sporting lineup over the next 12 months, and we can't wait to share this with you on the World of Champions. What does it mean to be closer together? It's taking the last bus home for a surprise visit. It's braving murky waters of today and finding something to smile about. Closer Together is never leaving anyone behind. It's bonding over the things we love, no matter our differences. Closer Together is strangers finding a connection. It's bringing home something much more than a box. It's being closer after going separate ways. It's the warmth of home. Or the beginning of something new. Closer Together is never letting distance keep you away. It's that welcome that always feels like the first. There's magic in sharing the things that we love. Because it's those things that bring us close together. You're still watching the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase for 2021. We've talked about creating content and telling the stories. But what about you, the customer, the, the audience, the viewer? Somebody needs to be at the helm of knowing what you want and how to change and make sure they deliver just that. We do have Nelly Mwanda, who's the head of Customer Value Management. Welcome. And we'd like to know so much more about the various packages that are on the DSTV and GoTV platforms. Thank you, Flavia. Nice to be here. Hello, everyone. So from MultiChoice, we continue to come up with new channels for you. We recently launched our Pearl Magic Prime channel and the Honey channel, where we have the in trend and in line with the new digital movement. We have the next big trend, where we have one of our very own, Nadia Matovu. We also have from Pearl Magic Prime, we have our Uganda local content, which we are now uh, showcasing. We recently had one of our channels, uh, Prestige, winning the best drama in the Uganda Film Festival that was recently launched. Um, with these channels, we promote Ugandan content because we have listened to our customers. They have asked us, when are you bringing content that is relevant to us? And we have seen a huge uptake from customers and excitement and positive feedback with these new recently launched channels. We also continue to show channels and entertainment for our children, especially during this COVID time, we need to keep the children entertained. So we have edutainment channels as well as cartoons and movies. On our Compact and Compact Plus channels, we continue to cater for our sports lovers. 
So you'll always find the UEFA games, you'll find the Emirates Cup playing. So there's sports for everyone. There's wrestling, there's uh, NBA as well. Yeah, so we have everything, every kind of entertainment for every kind of customer. Uh, perhaps you just tell us about the various campaigns that uh, you give as a benefit to your customers. As multi-choice, we continue to care for our customer. During the lockdown period, we had a We Got You campaign where we gave back to our customers. So for each customer, we were able to upgrade. If you paid for the current package that you were on, we will upgrade you to the next package. This was to allow you to view content on the higher package and appreciate what you do not always see on a daily basis. In the last uh, festive month, we had our step up campaign, whereby if a customer was on access, all he had to do was pay for family and then he would get to enjoy compact. So we stepped up every customer to the next level. And we've had positive feedback from customers. They have enjoyed the, the content on the upper bookers and they continue to pay for them. So that is what we like. We also have a uh, Weber We continue for customers who have stayed with us for long periods. We're always giving them back to you. We always give you, um, if you pay before your due date, we upgrade you to the next package. We have Showmax for our premium customers. We give a 100% discount for Showmax, free for you. And then for the other packages, we are giving you a 50% discount. And then you get to enjoy Showmax. With multi-choice, it only gets better. With every upgrade, you get to see new content. And we are always introducing new channels for all the bouquets. So that's it for multi-choice. So we have a question, since it's a virtual edition. Someone says, what solutions do you have for customers like myself who prefer the app and are always on the go, but are also interested in affordability? Oh, that's a nice one. So we recently partnered with the telecom companies uh, to make it more affordable and accessible. So we have the app that's running for both DSTV and GoTV. All you have to do is download it on your phones and all your tablets and get to watch our channels on the move. Everything is available and we actually have some discounts running for all those who download the app. So I think you need to rush and do that right away. That's fantastic news. Thank you so much, Nelly Mwanda, Head of Customer Value Management. And now, if you want a quick tour of the history of Uganda, just to get to know us better, whether you're a first-time visitor or a citizen who just wants to get to know Uganda better, the National Museum is where you would go. Now, who better to take us around than the Head of Customer Experience, Patricia Chichonjo. Take it away. Thank you, Flavia. I'm here at the Uganda Museum, and right next to me, is the Ford T. This was one of the first cars that was brought by the British colonial government in 1907 when Hesketh Bell came. At the time, it costs under a thousand dollars. I wonder how many of us would be able to afford it today. This particular car was handed over by the British colonial government in 1962 as they left. It was handed over to the museum and here it is, and here we are. At MultiChoice, we recently launched Showmax Pro that bundles the existing Showmax entertainment service with music, news, and sports channels directly from Supersport. Our active DSTV Premium customers will be happy to know that they'll get the Showmax subscription for free and our other subscribers will get it at half price. Our sales service platforms have been upgraded to enable customers to manage notification settings for payment history, changing their subscription packages, updating contact details, and fixing decoder errors using their mobile devices. Our applications include the USSD code star 206 hash, the WhatsApp bot, my DSTV and my GoTV app. With my DSTV app, you can put down your DSTV remote and use your convenient and pristine Digi remote right on your smartphone. Make sure you're in front of your TV and DSTV decoder and follow these simple steps to get started. Log into your DSTV account by selecting your country, surname or mobile number and smart card number and hit try now. Now test that you can turn your decoder on and off, are able to change channels and adjust your volume. Here you can give your new remote a fresh name and personalized background 
background to help us find the best content for you, personalize your viewing with what you are interested in, what you watch it on, and when you like to sit back and let us entertain you. And you are done. You are now ready to explore everything DSTV with your new pocket-sized Digi Remote safely and responsibly. Head on over to your app store now and get the My DSTV app to get started. Stay safe, stay informed, stay connected by using the Digi Remote from DSTV. Savia, I'm in the entertainment section of the museum where a number of instruments where it all began are displayed here. Traditional instruments from all over the country. The adungu from the north, the flutes from the west, the runyege from Bunyoro, a rich history of music instruments, some of which are used in today's contemporary music. This is where entertainment traditionally began. Like we've seen with the instruments traditionally, Multichoice is continually striving to create innovative ways to offer customers the best service. It's with this in mind that the new decoder functionality was created. The Enhanced Decoder Notification, otherwise known as EDN, is a functionality which aims to address communication issues for subscribers and take the admin out of TV viewing so that our consumers can get back to being entertained. This new functionality will provide viewers with streamlined access to important subscription information, including rewards notification, payable subscription amounts, methods to avoid late payment and disconnection. This will be done by displaying icons that represent the different types of notification on top of live television and will be available for both our consumers on DSTV and GoTV. The message will also be added to the mail messaging screen that we have been used to. Flavia, I'm standing next to the presidential cars. The first four are Benzes and the last two are the Toyota cars that carried the presidents of this country. The very first Benz to my left was the presidential Benz that President Idi Amin Dada rode in to parliament around on his official duties. And to my right, this cross-country Benz was the car that the pontiff, Pope John Paul, rode in when he came in 1993. In the ever-advancing world of video entertainment, innovation is a key driver for our business here at MultiChoice Uganda. Back to you, Flavia. Thank you so much, Patricia. Now I know where to start from. Given that I've always harbored a musical talent, I know where to start from when I visit the National Museum. Thank you so much, Patricia Chichoncho, their head of customer experience. You're still watching the Multi Choice Uganda Showcase 2021. And now we tell you about the content, the creation, the talent being trained. But what about the staff, the people who work so hard to deliver all of this great stuff to us on DSTV and Got TV? I'm joined by the head of human resource, Eunice Akanyesuje. How are you? I'm very well, Looking thank you, Flavia. How amazing. are you? Amazing. Thank you, you're way too kind. <laughs> yes, so COVID-19, we've spoken so much about it. And when it comes to the team that you lead at Malt Choice Uganda, I mean, how were you able to even deal with that? Because something nobody had experienced before. Where do you even start? And what sort of adjustments have you made to make sure everybody is happy and still working? Uh, thank you, Flavia. Um, so for us, COVID, if anything, was lessons upon lessons. The things that we never thought were possible instantly became possible. We learned um, that we were going to have to continue running a business, but top of our agenda, what was our priority through that entire season up until now, the safety of our people. So we had to make sure that we were able to take care of our people in whichever way we could. Um, we had to make sure that we are able to have them work safely, work at home. So that meant very many things. Um, people were not able to come into the office space. Um, so we had to do to, to make sure that they're able to still perform. 
at home. We never thought that was possible initially, but then when COVID happened, we had to make use of the tools that have been available and maybe we haven't used them optimally. Moving services to the cloud, taking calls at home, telesales, that whole thing happened. And we, we have learned and moved in just a, a short span of time. We've been able to evolve in the way we work. Yeah. Uh, you said short time, and I'm thinking about it. If all of these changes are happening to the staff and they have to make sure all of these things happen and they understand them quickly, there's a bit of learning there as well for them. Yes, there was a lot of learning, but we are grateful to our people because they were very adaptive. In Just like that, we all knew that the world had changed and we had to change along with it. So learning happened and it was ha happening virtually. So that too was new. We had a few meetings happening virtually before that, but with COVID, everything was online and our people adapted very quickly. So learning happened. We continued to do training even when everyone was at home, only when we could move only a few people to the office, maybe three or five, based on the need, the rest of the people were at home. But we continued to have training, our programs continued, and we, um, we saw that no one can break the spirit of our people with the way they adapted to this whole new world. Yeah, uh, for those who are saying, uh, this hasn't stayed. 2021, we're back to work in different ways. If I'm the kind of person who still wants to come in and ask questions face to face, uh, what have you done to make sure that we are served safely? So so first, first off, we, we still, as multi-choice, have not come back to full normal. We still have a few people working in the office, a few working at home because we have to decongest the office so social distancing and all that is still going on so we still have that happening for the staff for our customers who who want to come in who feel that i, I can't be talking to a machine all the time face to face yeah. time is very important to me so those are able to come through into our branches our shops and our staff have been enabled to serve them safely so you'll find them with with um face masks and sanitizers are available and face shields and temperature guns and all this is happening so we can serve our customers safely while looking out for our staff and the customers at the same time. Okay, so um, good thing we're virtual, so a lot of questions can actually come in. Let's pick two. One has said COVID-19 has definitely changed how we work. Yes. What advice can you give growing businesses on shift working and is it sustainable? So nice question. Like I said at the beginning, lessons learned. So we never thought shift working would, would enable us to perform the way we wanted to. And that's one of the things that we have learned. Um, having people not in the same space and having to micromanage them, but enabling your people to work away from where you are and trusting them so that you're not measuring effort, but you're measuring results. So shift working is actually sustainable and it says it's something that is going to become work of the future, ways of work for the future, because um, it's never going to be the same if we're to be honest with ourselves. And this has taught us so much. What I would advise businesses to do, growing businesses in times like this and moving into the future is to explore it give it wings so it can fly because um, people know what they need to do for as long as they're empowered shift working is the way to go remote working is going to be the way of the future wow now you know uh, somebody else asks what opportunities exist at multi choice uganda and how does one position themselves to work in this industry so so multi choice is um is a merit based organization in the way we recruit people to work with us. And besides the people that work directly at Multi-Choice, we also have agents that um, perform third party roles on behalf of our business. So in terms of opportunity, when opportunity arises, we put it out there and the winner takes it all. We try to, to look for the best talent. I'm sure some of the people you've seen, I, I mean, Flavia, you've spoken to them. So we, we try to look for the best in the market and give equal opportunity to all the people that come to us. But besides people that work directly with multi-choice, we have partners across across the spectrum in terms of agencies, dealers, 
um, third party partners and all those are opportunities that MultiChoice gives to people in the Ugandan workspace. Fantastic. The head of human resource at MultiChoice Uganda, maybe a parting shot before we let you go. Um, my parting shot would be embrace the moment. The, 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 this COVID pandemic has taught us that we, we don't know how much, how much time we have left. We don't know how much things will change, but what we have is now. And if we can just purpose to be our very best in the now, that's what counts. Wow. Purpose to be our very best in the now. We're celebrating our voices and telling our African stories on the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase for 2021. The following message is brought to you by Multi-Choice. The 2019 novel coronavirus, COVID-19. You probably know the name, but we encourage you to familiarize yourself with the following information. COVID-19 is a respiratory illness affecting many countries, with infections being reported globally, including many African countries. Symptoms can include a fever, cough, and shortness of breath. They may appear within two days or as long as 14 days after exposure. It's important to note that the virus can be transmitted by infected individuals who show no apparent symptoms. While there's no vaccine for COVID-19, there are precautions we can all take to limit and prevent its spread. Respiratory viruses spread through droplets produced while talking, coughing, or sneezing. It's important to avoid close contact with people who are sick, but it's also recommended that you adopt social distancing as a general practice. This includes avoiding hugs, handshakes, and other contact based greetings. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces regularly and cover your mouth and nose with a bent elbow or a tissue when coughing or sneezing, disposing of the tissue properly immediately. Remember to wash your hands as often as possible. Do this for 40 seconds using soap and water. If you don't have access to soap and water, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer and avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth with unwashed hands. Lastly, stay home if you are sick. And if you suspect you have been exposed to COVID-19, call your healthcare provider or the health authorities in your country. But do not go to a doctor's office or hospital unless instructed. You're still watching the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase 2021. And now that we know that, yes, we're creating content and all of that's happening. But here in Uganda, a lot was disrupted during the lockdown phase and as we're trying to stabilize now. So we want to have a chat with someone who's actually, uh, who is part of the team that's in charge of the city from Kampala Capital City Authority, the PRO, Daniel Nuavine. How are you? I'm very fine. Thank yes. You. Welcome to the Multi-Choice uh, Uganda Showcase. Pleasure. Yes. A pleasure. I would start with how are you, because I feel like the pandemic hit everyone differently, if I can say that. Have you adjusted back? Well, I'm all right. I'm fine. And uh, the city is getting back. Uh, it's getting all right. Uh, we have been affected. We were affected so much by the pandemic. Uh, we had a lockdown. Uh, we had businesses shut down. Uh, we had people falling sick. Of the 41,000 um, infections in the country, 19,000 were in Kampala. 19,000 were in Kampala. So it affected us significantly because then government had to step in and have uh, all crowded places, all uh, gathering places locked down. So it means the businesses were shut down, the transport was shut down, and uh, the city almost became a ghost town. Because as what say your work thrives when the city is busy. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a city of people. It's a vibrant city. It's a city of the night. Kampala is a city of the night. Uh, and all those watching should come to Kampala once you're really open. Kampala is a beautiful place to be. But all that beauty dimmed down. It dimmed down. Our nightlife shut down. Our business life. Uh, mostly shut down. All the activity in the city shut down, except for a few moments for essential workers in the markets. So business was at a slow. Uh, everybody was really affected by COVID. Coming from that mentality into then saying, you can now go to work, you can open the city, a lot of things can happen, but differently. What are the adjustments that have been made? Well, we, we had to, to make a lot of adjustments in relation with the government of course, with the guidance of, of government. One, we, we had to sensitize. First, we had to have a fully blown, uh, full blown out sensitization 
of the people of, the, of Kampala, the citizenry, and even the visitors who are coming in into Kampala, sensitize them and tell them, yes, COVID is here. Because of the way we had handled the pandemic, people were skeptical of even its existence. Huh? When, you had, uh, when we had the bad stories out there, the deaths out there, the massive infections out there, then they started realizing that there was a problem. So we had a full-blown uh, sensitization. We, we had to adjust the workspaces by interacting with the employers and uh, asking them to put in place the, SOP, or the SOPs. Uh, people should have their masks on, hand washing, social distancing. Uh, a whole new world came up in the city. So we did all these adjustments in the markets, public transport, uh, the matatus, commuter taxis, what we call them here, the taxi, taxi. <laughs> <Huh? Yes. laughs> were cut to half. Mm. The long route passenger vehicles that originate from Kampala were cut to half. That is the, the carriage, the number of passengers they carry because were all the cut distancing. because of the yeah. social distancing. You had to wash your hands getting entering a taxi, get, taxi, getting sanitized as you get into the taxi or into the bus, yes. getting into the market spaces getting into the workspaces. We had to do all these SOPs. Then we had to have a rapid response uh, team. We had to have a rapid response team. We had a toll-free line whereby uh, community alerts would come through. We had to have uh, village health teams who would uh, support the communities to come out and, uh, and identify all those suspected of having COVID-19, tracking those that were in contact it was a new ball game and also appealing to stakeholders, appealing to corporates to come in and help us with protective gear, with uh, all the support we needed. Because this wasn't something you prepared for or you planned for. We didn't plan for it. With food to the vulnerable, the people who work, the subsistence, uh, subsistence work, the subsistence workers, those who trade uh, from hand to mouth. In the city, we don't have subsistence farmers. Yeah. Uh, those it's, are largely yeah, subsistence up country. Business, sort of, now, subsistence yeah. business, those who work from hand to mouth. Uh, so it was a whole new ball game. It was a whole new arena for us as a city and as government. And also enforcing enforcing the SOPs. There's so much in saying, but the, you have yes. to implement, you have to make sure yes. it actually works. We, we had all this said, we had all this sensitization, we had all the SOPs in place, but enforcing them was also another aspect of it. The arcades, when we opened them up uh, in the pilot phase, we had to ensure there was water. Huh? Uh, water is so Ugandan. Yes. Water. Water. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> eh? yes. Water. For, huh? For the people getting into the into the arcades to wash their hands, yes. to sanitize, to have their masks on, to have very few people uh, in the arcades, to to have washrooms with running water yeah, in the arcades. All this we had to do to ensure we enforce the SOPs in the taxi parks, in the markets, such that we we, we control. The, the spread of uh, COVID-19. So you've talked about support uh, from your partners or stakeholders. Let's talk about Multi-Choice Uganda and how they actually came in to support KCCA. Well, we thank, we thank, and we are really grateful uh, to Multi-Choice and the intervention. We got about uh, 15,000 uh, pieces of protective gear, full array of protective gear. That's about 7,500 masks, uh, 7,500 full attire, huh? and these were disposable. All this protective gear, that is the masks and uh, the disposable suits, were at about $75,000, which is about 280 million Uganda shillings. And we are glad that it came in at the time it did, because it was at the peak of the pandemic, and this is when we needed it the most. This helped us a lot with our health workers. Uh, within the system of KCCA, we have about 700 health workers and uh, only about 64 of these were affected or infected with COVID and we had no death. It talks much more about the precaution yes. you took. So yes. multi-choice 
came in handy to protect our health workers because we had protective gear for them, both the mask and the gowns. Uh, we had the sensitization because in the most of the pop-ups of uh, Multi Choice, yeah. those that subscribe to Multi Choice always had the sensitization, the information, the information coming out. Uh, we always had the channels, the programming eh, were most suitable for the children eh, and uh, would allow us stay more at home, would allow the citizens to stay more at home. So it came in handy, Multi-Choice came in handy and we are forever grateful uh, for their input. Fantastic. Now that the city is, well, I would say sort of back in action, people are back to work, in the new normal but still back to work, what would be your call to the people? Well, my call to the people is that COVID is still here. And uh, we're seeing other jurisdictions, other countries, uh, second phases and third phases are coming in. So we need to keep the precautions up there. We need to keep the mask on. We need to sanitize. We need to social distance. We need to keep the hygiene in the workspaces, in our homes. And we need, we need to be more cautious than ever before to ensure this doesn't come back. I know a, a lockdown may be a wide, eh? a, a, a wide effect or a wide intervention by, by governments, but we have the first lockdown, the individual lockdown having the mask on, that is the first lockdown that we should have. If you're in a public place, let's have our masks on. Let's ensure we, we live responsibly. We live, we live responsibly in order not to spread uh, the virus. Right. So this is a virtual edition and we have questions from you online. Um, Daniel, someone says that KCC has done well over the years. Great. Um, but how is it planning to support the youth program? For example, Multichoice has the talent factory, the young people who are coming into the film industry. How, are, how is the support coming from KCC this time to uh, the MTF and so on? Well, in Kampala, we, we have a number of programs, especially to support the youth. We have the Employment Service Bureau that is entirely run by KCCA. And here we prepare youth for the job market. But we also have the skidding at uh, Kawalagara, that is one of the suburbs in one of the divisions of uh, Kampala, where we generate skills. Now, we may not have moved into the, the film industry yet, but maybe this is an opportunity for multi choice to come in and partner with KCCA such that we develop the skill sets in film. I, I love film. Probably I would, I would have ended up in film there somewhere, you know. but <laughs> if it comes up, I would be one of the first people to sign it. But for the youth, we have uh, space and uh, the artists that want to generate films or create film or any kind of art, any kind of art, music, uh, sculpturing, painting, uh, they can poetry. They can come up. We have space, and we are ready to work with uh, whoever is coming in to support us. But we have been a part of uh, supporting the industry, where permissions are sold, uh, where events uh, are to happen in the city. Uh, we have the national theatre in the neighbourhood, and uh, we support them with permits. Uh, we support them in any way that they request us, and we are ready to embrace film now. <laughs> that's, a good, that's good news. Uh, but speaking of permits, the next question somebody asked that um, it's difficult to get permits for locations to shoot the films and the interventions. Can KCCA work on this and support movie makers? But you were just talking about it. We have the space in the city to shoot. How is the process of accessing permission? Well, most of, uh, most of the spaces that we have uh, we have the public spaces, and uh, believe me, Kampala has great, great public spaces, great monuments. Well, because of the preservation of most of these monuments, uh, there is a, perm a, a permission or there is a process to get permits to do this. But we have expedited this, such that within about uh, an hour or two hours, or even a day, at most a day, if you're going to, to utilize the, the venue, if it's, for example, a park, if it is uh, a monument, uh, a space that has a monument in it, if it's a, a public space that is used 
by so many other people. We have to engage the stakeholders and alert them uh, that there is something that is going to happen here. So it may take longer there because we have to prepare, but this is not more than two days. That's good news. That's the PRO of KCCA, Kampala Capital City Authority, Daniel Nwemwin, is saying that if you want to create or tell our African stories, you've got the space, you've got the whole city to play with. Just seek permission. And it says not more than two days. You should be able to access the space and tell your stories. Thank you so much for your time. You're still watching the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase 2021. Get one month of DSTV Premium Movies with Ad Movies. <laughs> exactly what I need. Ad movies can be added to your DSTV Compact Plus, Compact, Family and Access subscription with the My DSTV app. I like it. I love it. Just activate Ad Movies to unlock DSTV Premium movie channels for a whole month at a great price. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. That's a month of Will, Samuel, Jamie, Kevin and explosive action for the blockbuster lovers. Stop that! No! A month of Tiffany, Issa, Tracy, Love, and A-list laughs for those who like to keep it light. A lot of fun time. And a month of <laughs> to keep the kids entertained. This just got real. You coming? To get a month of DSTV Premium Movies at any time, add movies using the My DSTV app or by visiting DSTV.com. Because this is your movie moment. Thank you so much for being part of the virtual edition of the Multi-Choice Uganda Showcase 2021. So you've heard it all. There's no reason why you as a viewer wouldn't enjoy our own homegrown stories. It's whether it is saying, that's also okay. Celebrate our voices, tell our African stories on Pearl Magic Prime, our own channel where we get to tell our stories and be the best with the Multi-Choice Talent Factory, whether you want to be trained as a scriptwriter, a director, a producer, or a set designer, whatever it is, Dream it and Monsters will give you the platform. That's it until next time. Bye.